Hi, I'm Vivian Harris and I'm a climate activist from Bega in uh, the far south coast of New South Wales. And Shane has asked me to tell you a little bit about why I became a climate activist and what I do. Now, I have been interested in environment and working at reducing my um, own environmental impact for quite a few years. I've been vegetarian for 30 years. But, and I, like probably most of you, thought that we were getting a handle on climate change because after all, you you read, you know, newspaper articles and see television things on the latest thing in renewables and there's a general sense that things we were on top of it. But then the 2018 um, IPCC report came out and I realised that not only were we not on top of it, that the emissions were still going up but we had so very little time to fix it. You know, we have known about climate change for my entire life, but we haven't taken the steps we needed to, um, partly because you know, there was a been deliberate campaign of disinformation, um, campaigned against uh, doing the right thing. So in 2018, in October 2018, I realised we were running out of time. And um, I have a granddaughter and she will be only 17 when we run out of time. And so I realised then that I had to um, not just mosey along at, at doing things to reduce my impact, but I had to actually accelerate. And so while, you know, I am quite actually happy with my in, uh, individual climate um, action you know I'm vegetarian I don't fly while I have a car um, in case I need to leave early in the case of uh, bushfires like we had down here last summer um, I don't actually drive it um, I eat local food I, I eat unprocessed food you know my uh, electricity is coming from renewable sources and I'm going to have solar put on my house um, in the near future and so I have actually got my um, uh, carbon footprint down below four, which is the average across the world. And uh, two is where we're aiming for, and preferably actually neg is negative is what we're really all aiming for, to pull carbon out of the air. So individually, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. And, you know, once some of my hobbies are foraging and, and uh, things like making my own uh, sourdough bread and, and doing craft and you know, we do that sort of thing. And Shane did suggest I could show you some of those things. But the trouble is that while they're very Instagrammatic and very photogenic and that sort of thing, they're not actually very effectual. Um, some of the most important things you can do, you can't actually see. And so the fact, um, so some of the important things I've done that you can't see is I've moved my superannuation to a uh, super fund that doesn't invest in fossil fuels. I've moved my bank accounts from banks, the big four banks, um, to a bank that doesn't invest in fossil fuels. I've start just recently uh, moved my insurances um, from insurance companies that invest and underwrite fossil fuel uh, projects, and I've moved them to one that doesn't. You know, this is a way that all of us can shift our money um, away from the companies that are causing the actual damage. But all of this really still isn't enough. Um, we just don't have enough time. If we'd all started our individual actions 40 years ago, maybe we it would be enough, but it's not now. We don't have enough time. So we need to do collective action. And, you know, I sign petitions I write submissions, um, but you actually need to get together with other people. You know, it's not something you can do by yourself. So I, when I moved to Bega, I didn't actually know anybody, which made um, joining a group a um, bit more difficult because yeah, when I looked up climate action and that sort of thing on Google and Bega Valley, I didn't actually find the local climate action group because it's called Clean Energy for Eternity and I would never have thought of looking for those words. So I started doing 
um, inspired by Greta, I started doing a weekly climate strike in front of um, my federal MP, Mike Kelly's office, every Friday. And because I didn't know anybody else, I just copied Greta and I just did the whole school day. So I started, I sat there and started, at, dropped my granddaughter at school at nine, came back, sat down and left again in time to collect her for school. Uh, brought my lunch, brought my sign, uh, which my granddaughter helped make, which says climate action now, bigger. And I just sat there and talked to anybody who wanted to talk about climate change. And that very first time I did it, I felt sick with nerves and anxiety. Um, in some respects, it was a little bit easier for me because I didn't know anybody in Bega to be embarrassed if they saw me sitting there. But I was scared of uh, people yelling at me, uh, the police being called, um, I, all the things that they... But in actual fact, you know, it's perfectly legal to sit on the footpath for six hours if you want to. And the only people who really want, who stop and talk to you um, are people who are already interested and, and want to talk about it. Everyone else carefully avoids your eyes. So having you know, done some of them online and had a few weeks off uh, for being away from Bega, you know, I'm up to week 73, I think. And what it was good for, though, was connecting me to other people. Um, I would have long, you know, the first few weeks, you know, I'd have a, about six conversations and a lot of them were women my age saying, you know, thank you for being here. I thought I was the only person who cared. And I think that's the thing. We all feel alone. We think that we're, we're the only ones who, who are caring about this. So then the federal election happened and with that disastrous result of a climate change denying government, and some people I was, well, was with, um, the com we just, you know, we just was, you know, okay, so we need grassroots action now. And, well, I went home and cried the next day um, or the next day. But other people didn't. And they organised with word of mouth and Facebook um, a meeting for people interested in climate change on the Monday after the election. And I knew about that meeting because one of the people who I'd talked to uh, while I was sitting outside um, Mike Kelly's office contacted me and and told me it was on. So I turned up for that expecting maybe five people to be there. And there was 100 people, 100 people on 24 hours word of mouth notice. And uh, that has to be, you know, one, remain one of the highlights of my, of my life. And that was the beginning of... Um, Climate Action Mobilisation, Bega or CAM. And one of the first targets we decided to go for was to try and get the local council to declare a climate emergency. And with petitions and turning up at council meetings and all that, we did. We got a climate emergency declaration through in August last year, which um, some councillors immediately put in a motion to rescind, but we fought that back too and it remains in place. And then, of course, we got hit by um, the bushfires, which uh, burnt two-thirds of our shire. Um, and then, of course, COVID. Um, and we've also had a by-election. Um, so CAM, as much as we work on campaigns together, we've, um, we've you know, supported all the student climate strikes. We send uh, large groups up to Canberra when there's a um, Canberra action happening. We have um, talked, to, uh, got questioned all the candidates for our by-election and, and written a, um, a table on how well they uh, intend to respond to climate change, which we distributed widely. We, together, we, we actually get things done. Um, and that's what I would encourage everybody to be doing is you don't have to do it all, but you do need to be there and you need to be with other people who are all working together on for the same thing. And whenever I feel scared about doing anything new, which I feel frequently, I just think to myself, am I more scared for what's going to happen in the future for my granddaughter or I'm more scared of you know doing videos uh, public speaking etc and it always comes down to I'm more scared for my granddaughter <laughs>